translating your website or app can significantly expand your audience. While developers often rely on libraries like internationalization, these tools aren't always accessible to non-technical teams. When marketing and product teams need to manage translations, solutions like Crowdin and Localize are helpful, but can be very quickly expensive. Doji bridged the gap by providing a free open source alternative that empowers your entire team to collaborate on translations. It integrates seamlessly with internationalization, making it easy for everyone to manage and update content. You can use Doji Cloud version, which offers a free tier, or use the self-hosted version including an unlimited number of strings. Some premium features, such as AI translation, required a paid license. To install it, you can follow the Getting Started guide on their self-hosting documentation, or use a platform like ours, Elestio, to take care of the installation, updates, backups, and ongoing maintenance for you. To install Toji with our platform, head to ls.io and click on Login. Click on Deploy My First Service, search for Toji, and select. Choose between the different cloud providers, region and service plan based on your needs, then next. Adjust the settings, the level of support, I will keep the free included one, and then create service. Once the installation is finished, you will receive an email. You can follow the click here to get the password link. Then click on this icon to copy the password to your clipboard and follow your admin UI link. Enter your email address and paste the password from your clipboard, then login. We arrive on Toji dashboard. This is the link of our different projects. By default, there is a demo project created with a quick start guide we can follow to know the basics of Toji. Let's follow the quick start guide. We have start your first project. You have the choice between trying the demo project that is here or create a project from scratch. I think we can try the demo. So click on it and it will guide you where to click. Open the demo project and you arrive on the project overview where you can see all the different language, the different keys, the percentage of translation done and what has been reviewed. So here in this context, we have 99% of the project that has been translated and 1% that has been translated but requires validation. It's what we can see here on the French language. And we have some other metrics as well. For example, uh, the number of strings that your project contain. If you are using the self hosted version, it's not a problem if it's too big. Otherwise, you can see when you will reach the limit to get a paid plan. Then the second step of the quick start guide is to set up languages and machine translation. We need to click here on the globe icon. We can add or modify project language here, OK. And we can also enable machine translation to use machine translation algorithm to automatically translate some content. OK. And if we want to add AI customization, unfortunately, it's only in the premium plans. But you can add it to your instance if it's something that adds value to what you do. So let's go to project language. We can see how to add language. Let's say Japanese or Italian. Let's add those two languages. And now they are in the list and the base language is English. Then before diving into the keys and translation part, we can invite team members to help us create the translations. So go to members, invitations, and members. So we can see there is only me right now, but I can invite user. And what is interesting is it's not just a general invitation. Let's say I type a fake email. I have the choice between basic or granular permission. And based on what I will choose, for example, translate, I can allow only specific languages. If I have one translator that is specialized in French, I will allow only changes on the French language and I won't allow this user to impact the others. It can be by mistake or you don't want to take any risks. You can adjust this and then invite the user. Fine, let's jump into the fourth part. So we add keys manually or use import. Let's open add keys. So we open the translations tab. This is where the, the work is done. We will create a key later, but it's what we can do here. We will do it later when we create a project together using Next.js. Here we are on the list of the translations of our project. 
So currently we are in English and German. We can select multiple languages at once and have all the different translation. But if you prefer, you can just take two of them. Here you can see we have add and in French we have ajouter. We don't know exactly if the translation is correct sometimes only on uh, the text that it contains because it can depend on the context. Where Tolji is very great at it is to give context to the translators. So first, there is a description here. So if you go to edit key, you can see there is the description. We could also have a namespace. Let's say you have multiple features or just want a namespace per page, or if you have a common namespace with buttons such as exit, back that you will reuse anywhere in the project, it can be good to organize your project like this. Then if the description is not enough, you can also add text. And what I really like is that you can add screenshots. So here is the demo project, not what we will really use, but you have on the screenshot where exactly this button is. And it's way easier for the person that will translate to see exactly what the translation is attached to, to not make any mistakes or any misjudgment. Let's say we are working as a team and I'm not the only one in charge of the translation. I could add some comments and say, can someone help me on this one? I'm not sure. You type and you have the different comments. If I go here, you would see a notification that someone posted a comment and then you can discuss with it or change the translation. Let's say, Ajouté, I just changed the conjugation, which is false in this case, but let's do it. We can see currently it's still in a non-reviewed mode. We can mark it as reviewed. And if I open it, I open the history tab and you can see everything that has been done and by who and when. Just before creating our project, if we go back to the quick start guide, we also had the import option. So if you start your project, it's not very useful to do it. So here's in the import because you would create your translation in Tolji and then you would export it to be available in your project. But let's say you have an existing project using internationalization library. You could import the file drag and drop them and it will be automatically editable within Tolji. Perfect. Now let's see how we integrate Tolji within our project. Click on integrate. This is here that it happened. We can choose our weapon, it's our framework or the way we want to integrate it inside our project. Let's choose an XJS project that we will create together. Then what we need is an API key. So we need to create a new one. Let's say demo next, the expiration. We don't want it to expire. So let's choose never expires. And then the default scope should be correct, but you can see that you can have fine tune permission. Then if it's good for you, hit save. The integration guide is very well made. You just have to follow the instruction. But first we need to create an XJS project. To create an XJS app, we simply have to run yarn create next app or npx if you want to use npm later. Let's do it in a terminal, yarn, create, next, dash, app. What is your project name? Let's name it demo, demo Tolji, enter, TypeScript, no, yes, lint, yes, tailwind, yes, source directory, app router, no, but it's not important, just a simple project, no, and perfect. It's creating the project for us. Once it's done, file, open folder and open the folder it just created for us. Now to test our project, we can run yarn dev and follow this link. We have a running Next.js project. We can now add Tolji. First, we need to adapt our localization settings. So in next config.js, I can just take the internationalization part, search for the next config and add next to React strict mode, the settings. Uh, for the locals, we can add French and German, I think it's DE. We also have Italian and Japanese, but I didn't edit them. But if you add other locals to your project, don't forget to add them to this array here. Then we need environment variables. The first one is the API key that it created when we follow the steps. And the second one is the URL of our Toji instance. It changes if you are using the self-hosted version or the cloud version. 
let's create a new file. Let's save it. And I think it's .env.development.local and enter and use the dot. Perfect. Then we need to use Dolgy provider. So we just have to copy everything up to my app, open the app component here, just below the import. We can have all the different imports. We'll have to do a few changes based on the locals. So we have the French and the German one. Be sure to type the right path. And also for static data here, French and the Deutsch. And then finally, within my app, we need to add the provider. We can simply replace the return with the provider. So it's using the router to know the current local that Next.js will switch us automatically. And I think we missed the installation of the provider, which is here. We need to install Tolgy React. We can just copy it, either use npm on, or yarn or whatever. Yarn add paste the library and yarn dev. Right now, if we try it, we will have issues with the translation. It's expecting JSON file, but we didn't download it them. They say it in a subtle way, it's to get the files, export your data. So we need to go to the export section and export the different languages. Italian and Japanese, we didn't do anything, so we don't need to do them. We use flat JSON, take all namespaces, and you can decide to only take the one that has been reviewed. But let's take everything, export. So the path is previous one. So I guess it's source. And then drag and drop the translations in the new folder. Perfect. Now it's running correctly, but we don't have any change because we are not using the text to translate content. To do this, we have two solutions, either to use the T component from Tolgy or use a hook that you name use translate. I prefer the component one, but it's a matter of taste. Let's add it in the main page. It's the index here on the root of pages. And get started by editing. We can change the text and add some text from a key. So by default, it's translation key. If it doesn't exist and doesn't have a default value, it will just write the key. But you can change it and say default value Welcome to our, oops, our site, our beautiful website. And let's say, welcome message home. Save it. And currently this is welcome to our beautiful website, but the key doesn't exist. So let's create it to be able to change this text. Now let's go to our project translations and create a new key. So the key is welcome message home. We don't select a namespace. Top left message. We can add different tags and the default text. So let's say welcome to our beautiful website. Let's add an emoji and save. Now we can see that we have the new text containing the emoji. If we reload, we don't have it and then it appears because locally it's using this file and it's doing a network request to see if we have updates in our translation. So it's taking a time before updating it. That's why you have the last step that is export. So you can export the final translation and then you won't have a loading time for production. But let's go back to our translations because so far we didn't translate anything. So we have welcome to our beautiful website. Let's change the French translation. Bienvenue sur notre merveilleux site and save. Currently, we don't have a picker on our website to change the language, but by default with Next.js, it's in the path. So you can enter dash fr enter and you are using now the French version. And we have Bienvenue sur notre merveilleux site. And if we try the German one, because it doesn't exist, what we have is not the English one, it is the default value without the emoji. 
Of course, it includes all the features from internationalization library. For example, here you have variables, hello name, or you also have uh, the ability to add the plural form when it's one or other, because in different language, the way to do the plural is not the same. Let's try the welcome message that is using a name. We can click, copy the key, and then we need to use the name as a variable. Let's do it on another text. Um, we have docs. Okay, we will replace it with the T component. T, key name, and it's welcome message. But we need to add uh, the name variable. So it's in the params. It's an object, so you can add multiple params. Name, let's say LSTO. And because that key existed in German, we have hello LSTO. If we switch to French, we have bonjour LSTO. And in English, we have hello LSTO. Perfect. And of course, refer to the documentation to know how to implement it in depth. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed discovering Tolji with us. Please hit the like button to help our channel be more visible to other open source lovers. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our next platform overviews. And if you want to continue your open source journey, I recommend you watch this video, available here.